Mr. President, welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. I thank your program and you for preparing this interview. I want to ask you what it feels like to be what some people have called the it man of this UNGA. Highly anticipated, you seem to be the focus of attention, and unusually for Iranian presidents, people are looking at you with some at least cautious optimism. What does it feel like to be in this position? Before beginning to respond to your question, I would like to actually say my greetings to the people of America, who are very dear and near to the hearts of the Iranian people, and to wish them a good time and good times ahead. Now, for any president, in order to use an opportunity to the benefit of others, it would require him to use the platform given by his people to project that in places such as the United Nations. There was a lot of expectation, maybe too high expectations, that you and President Obama might at least shake hands today at the United Nations. Nobody thought there was going to be a formal meeting, but perhaps that you would at least say hello, shake hands, break the ice. But you didn't. Why didn't you? There were some talks about it, in fact, to perhaps arrange for a meeting between President Obama and myself so that given the opportunity, we can talk with each other. And the preparation for the work was done a bit as well. The United States declared its interest in having such a meeting, and in principle, Iran could have, under certain circumstances, allowed for it to happen. But I believe that we didn't have sufficient time to really coordinate the meeting to the full extent that we needed to. But speaking of the ice-breaking that you mentioned, in my opinion, it's already beginning to break because the environment is changing. And that has come about as a result of the will of the people of Iran to create a new era of relations between the people of Iran and the rest of the world. Our hope, our expectation in fact, indeed, is that all nations, and this nation as well, will respond positively to the people of Iran. Are you authorized to start talking, negotiating with the United States. Are you authorized by the Supreme Leader back in Iran? Now, we have to remember that when it comes to the United States, for 35 years there have been no relations between the two countries, between Iran and the United States. The higher officials of the two countries have never spoken with one another, especially at a level of president. You know, they have for two presidents to sit down. This has not happened for 35 years. So necessarily, we must give time for diplomacy to work itself, for dialogue to come about, for circumstances to be laid properly. The Supreme Leader of Iran has said that should negotiations be necessary for the national interests of the country, that he, in fact, is not opposed to it. He has specifically mentioned in a recent talk that he is not optimistic regarding the issue of talks with the United States, but when it comes to specific issues, government officials may speak with their American counterparts. If an opportunity had risen today and the prep work for that had been done, probably the talks would have taken place, primarily focused on the nuclear issue or on developments on the Middle East. And therefore, the Supreme Leader has, I can tell you, given the permission for my government to freely negotiate on these issues. So you do have that authorization? Yes. Yes. President Obama today in his speech to the United Nations said that he had authorized uh, and placed Secretary John Kerry uh, at the head of the negotiating team. They're going to meet with your foreign minister, Mr. Zarif, in terms of the nuclear issue. Are there other issues too, bilateral issues, that you can start discussing or your representatives with the United States? Or is it just nuclear and, as you said, other Middle Eastern issues? There are numerous issues that could be discussed by the two governments, but my principle has been from the outset that the nuclear issue can be an important test for the two governments to fulfill their negotiations and to reap the benefits of it. So for the benefit of both nations, I believe that both our priority and perhaps possibly the priority of the other side, the United States, is the nuclear issue. If the nuclear issue is settled conclusively, I I believe that that will pave the way for numerous other issues that can be discussed. 
You spoke in your address to the General Assembly about a peaceful resolution to the nuclear issue. Can you give me the framework, the principles of what you would see as the possibility of a deal? On the nuclear issue, the first point is that the entire world must recognize that Iran does not seek a nuclear weapon, nor shall it seek a nuclear weapon. But at the same time, it would insist that it will seek its rights like any other nation within the framework of international law and exert its will to fulfill those rights for its nation. You say, and you've said many times, and every Iranian president has said it, and so has the Supreme Leader said it, that Iran does not want nuclear weapons. However, you know the issue is a confidence issue and that, frankly, many people don't believe it. They want to know what you can do to raise the confidence level. As you know, sir, every UN resolution uses the word confidence. It's all about confidence. So what can you specifically do? What is Iran prepared to do to inspire confidence in its nuclear program? Agence, uh, bad as, uh the IAEA, after hundreds of hours of numerous inspections and continual work, did in 2004 issue a clear resolution stating that there was no evidence with regards to Iran's nuclear program of a deviation to that program. And that resolution was actually endorsed and approved by all members of the board of directors of the IAEA, including the United States of America. Now, the second path for confidence is really a political path, when there are no ties between two countries, where the two countries are not talking and negotiating with one another, it's possible that some lack of confidence could emerge. Will you freeze enrichment at 20 percent? Will you trade your existing 20 percent enriched fuel for buying it or ac accessing it from outside the country? These are talks that countries will engage in through negotiations. But there shouldn't be any prerequisite to build that confidence, to sit at the table. If that prerequisite is a threat of military action, that, to us, implies that the negotiations are not for real. So, if we speak of confidence, confidence must be mutual for certainty. This is the foundation of confidence building. It's foundation to be created by both sides, and it should be built by both sides. The building of confidence cannot be built unilaterally. What about the Iraq heavy water facility, where people are worried that you could start extracting plutonium? That's yet another danger and a, a worry for the, for the rest of the world. It's due to come online, perhaps in the spring. Will you delay putting it online, the Iraq facility? You are aware that the Arak site is there to meet the medicinal needs of our country, and that was the case from the outset when we announced the site. Therefore, as long as Arak becomes operational, there is still a significant amount of time left until it actually becomes fully operational. Now, it is possible that in the future such talks could take place between Iran and the P5 plus one on such issues, but so far, the issue of Arak. Arak was never on the negotiating table. But it could be. Anything is possible in negotiations. It's possible to talk about anything. And what are you looking for in return? I know you want sanctions lifted. Do you think you'll get them all at once? Or what are the most important things you want? We believe that sanctions are illegal and inhumane, and therefore, we certainly believe that the sanctions must be removed. We believe sanctions have no effect. The goal of those who sanction us, whatever it may be, they will not reach that goal. The only path ahead is negotiations. We must sit down and talk and settle this for once and finally.